Oh, just got a bunch of achievements. So maybe there is no final boss? Because I just got three achievements that look like the difficulty achievements, but... Let's open those arcs. Oh, wow, okay. Interesting. Chief Technical Officer John Carmack. All right, well, this is where I typically give kind of a mini off-the-cuff review of the game that I just played. Overall, it was pretty good. Uh, it was better than I expected. The gunplay felt really good. Most of the weapons felt useful in various situations. The pistol is probably the weakest of all the weapons. Uh, the the binocular add-on was great, but having to shoot semi, uh, the standard enemies, the standard range enemies, like five and six times in the head for a kill felt kind of lame. I mean, I understand I was on a harder, dif harder difficulty, but still, it, it really hurt the efficiency of the pistol. So I very rarely used it. But uh, yeah, and overall the guns felt good. They felt good. To sh they felt good to shoot. I wish there'd have been more upgrades. It's kind of lame that every gun only gets one, maybe two upgrades uh, a piece. I feel like I upgraded all the guns really early on, and then that was just it. There wasn't any more upgrades to save up for. And most of my money went towards ammo, honestly, because some. Some guns in particular, I didn't find very much ammo for. Like, I don't think I found many, many ammo or felt much sniper rifle ammo, for example. So I ended up having to buy a lot of that. But so, so the, the gunplay felt really good. Enemies overall were pretty weak, even given the harder difficulty level. I felt like the game was a little too easy on this level. I think it should have been a little bit tougher, especially with the ability, one, the ability to resurrect yourself or use the... Uh, whatever it is that shocks you back to life. That made it easy, and then especially when you got the second one, which that was an optional quest, but once you got the second one, it was even easier, along with being able to use bandages to heal yourself and hide behind stuff to to regener regenerate your health, which that was definitely an unfortunate thing that they decided to go with. They didn't have a weapon limit, which is great. I want to see more FPSs ditch the idiotic weapon limits. But they still clung to the regenerating health mechanic, which sucks. I would rather have health pickups and what have you. Of course, it sort of made sense in the context of, oh, you know, you have nine nano machines inside your body that go around and fix you and, and all of that. So, I mean, that made sense, but I still don't like regenerating health, no matter how you try to kind of cover it up with with lore in the game. Uh, but yeah, the enemies overall were pretty weak. There was a decent variety. Uh, the mutants were pretty much all the same. You had the kind of ones that were kind of ranged, but most of them just ran up at you anyway. And then you had the various like bandits and the authority. The bandits and the authority were mostly the same though. They were just, you know, ranged units. They fought pretty much the same. They had the same weapons like grenades. Now, the Authority had the guys with the electronic shields, and you could take those out with imps, and you could take the Authority guys out with imps pretty easy. So that was cool, but other than having maybe more hit points, they weren't really all that that tough. That one stage where there was those bandits, like, almost all of them were heavily armored bandits, that was insane because they, they just took way too many. They took way too much damage, period. 
it is became kind of a slog to get through it but that was only the the one real part and you know writing out a sniper ammo at that time was not good either and again i do remember i i'm on a harder difficulty but just having the enemies take a ton of damage i would rather see more enemies not oh well you just have to shoot them a hundred times more wow very short credits was not expecting that is there anything post credits nope does not look like there is but uh, i'll go ahead and uh, go on with my my mini review uh, you know the sounds were all really good the voice acting i thought was really good overall i don't think there was anybody who was in particular well there was like that one character who i noticed was like wow that's very bad voice acting everybody else was, was really really good i thought the story itself was pretty generic uh it, it nothing was really explained like it's just so weird that you let you get out of this arc and everybody's just like hey you're an arc person that's significant Anyway, I need you to go kill these bandits and come back to me for this quest. Oh, the authority's bad. We're not going to ever really tell you why they're bad until, like, right near the end. But I'm like, okay, if I was in this situation, and yes, I granted, understand game logic. But, you know, we should be moving past this whole, oh, well, game logic thing. We should be actually trying to make more cohesive and make sense, uh, stories that make sense. But, like, I would be like, look, what the hell's going on? Like, who's this authority? Why, what is the whole deal with this arc? What the hell is going on? And there's all this illusions of things going on. But nobody ever really stops and tell you. Until the end where they kind of talk about, oh, the authority are making these mutants to these like super mutant uh, enemies. And you don't even see that until the very last stage. So, And the story was definitely bleh. But honestly, I don't really expect much out of id software as far as story goes. I don't expect much out of id software, period. Which I know is blasphemy to some people, but... It's, it's the truth. The game look gra graphically, the game for the most part looked really good. Like the outdoor areas look great. The texture pop in was awful. Like the fact that they let that go live with texture pop in that bad is sh frankly shameful. And there was a, there were some fixes I tried to make it better and it definitely helped a lot, but that should be default. Like if, if I can find fixes online to, to make it significantly better, this should be the base game. You guys need to go and fix it. Though, to my understanding, ZeniMax is is to blame for a lot of that. The company that owns its software. So, yeah, that, that could be it. Because ZeniMax is a pretty shitty company. But but even that was standing, like I said, the game looked great at certain areas. But then there's other parts where the texture's just like total balls. It was so weird to see these really detailed textures right next to these complete awful textures. It was very, very jarring. But overall, um, I enjoyed the game. Uh, I would say, as far as a rating, 1 to 10. 10 is the great game. 5 is mediocre, where it's got maybe equal parts good, equal parts bad. I would give this game about a 7, uh, it, which is not a bad grade. This is not an IGN 7, where this game is terrible and unplayable. We give it a 7. It's It means, well, it's good, but it's not great it's still got a long way to go i'd almost give this game a 6.5 to 7. just because <clears throat> like i said the upgrades were too few few and far between and it might get monotonous for some people uh, i mean i like the I mean, if i like the combat i can pretty much do with the whole game and not feel like it's getting monotonous but for a lot of people it might get a little monotonous uh because it's the enemies are mostly the same uh, you either had the guys with the guns or the mutants so you know, it's it's up to you, and you do end up going back to the same stages several times if you do side missions, and that uh, that was kind of crappy to have to just keep going back to the same spots over and over uh, for side missions. But yeah, it was it was a good game. I give it about a seven. And as far as the price, I also like to give a price rating, and what that is is that's the price that I think that you should pay to pick the game up. If you are an FPS fan, in particular, if you prefer. I guess more of an old school type where you can save anywhere you've got infinite you can load all your guns at any time then i would say pick this up for maybe 30 dollars max if you're an fps fan i i personally wouldn't suggest paying more than 30 for it if you just like fps games you're not a big fan but you do enjoy playing them on occasion 15 to $20 is, is what I would suggest, uh, especially if you're going to do the side quests. And there's definitely side quests I feel like that I missed 
I, I'm almost positive I did not do all the side quests. So if you if you are the type of person who enjoys a shooter and you like to do side missions, there's all the racing you can do, and you can also do like the, the, the card game as well if you want to do that. So there is extra things in the game that I didn't explore fully just because I personally didn't find it interesting. So I think anywhere between the $15 and $30 range, again, given how much you you play the game, I think would be worth it. If you just play through, if you're the type who just plays through and goes through only the main story quests, which I think you're weird if you do that, then I wouldn't do more than 15 because I think you could knock this game out pretty darn quickly uh, if you just do the main story quests. So anyway, that was my Let's Play of Rage by id Software. Let me know what you guys thought of the series in the comments below. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. If you like what you saw, please do like my videos as that does help me out a lot. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.